Okay, guys. Um, we'll do a little bit of a, a re and re rebuild. Well, top end replacement piston sleeve today on this little OS 15 CV. Uh, I have it mostly already all stripped apart because, I mean, you guys already know how to take screws out of an engine. We're going to be replacing the piston and sleeve and possibly the wrist pin if it needs it. Um, the connecting rod is actually in very good shape. This engine was beat on pretty hard but looked after. So we're going to get to... This is a 2 millimeter, by the way, just in case you wanted to know. Oh, a lovely day for this kind of stuff. We're also going to be cutting the crankshaft, but not in this video being the fact that I forgot to go to the hardware store and get more cutoff discs for my Dremel. <clears throat> Pardon my French. So, get our head screws there. We're just going to give all these parts kind of a little bit of a clean up really quick. <coughs> and uh, stab it back together. We're going to be using some castor oil as the lubricant for reassembling. I know my little area here is a friggin' disaster, but um, the head gasket is here, make sure it's there, make sure it's not lost or missing or damaged or anything because your engine might not seal. We're just going to be using some non-chlorinated brake parts cleaner. Works really good for cleaning motors. Works exceptionally well for taking off all the varnish and goop that these engines can make. These are a great little engine, I don't know why they ever stopped making them. Kind of really sucks that they did. People are saying the 110 scale scene is dead. Well, I mean, I guess it is in a way, but uh, there shouldn't be any reason why it is, in my opinion, because most people you talk to, they had an old RC10 GT or some old style of 110 scale truck that was just their favorite. You also want to make sure there's no stuff, like any kind of crap stuck to the head gasket surface, because if there is, your head gasket will not seal properly. And, uh, okay, we're just about looking good here. Yeah, so just a little bit more of a... This is actually going to be going into my, well, one of my Black Tub RC10 GTs. <coughs> um, reason being is I took the 12 out of it, because the 12 is, well worn right out. Still runs, but it just doesn't really have the power that it once did. And I'm going to send the piston and sleeve away actually to a friend of mine for a repinch. I'm going to take out the sleeve. Now a lot of people get really confused with these engines. And I've actually got a whole bunch of these engines that are almost new for free. Um, and I'll explain that in a minute here why. We're going to take the piston and we're going to take the piston out next. But uh, if you look in here, you can see the connecting rod, and a lot of people at this step will freak out and go, oh, "I don't know what way it goes back in," or "I don't, I'm scared to take it apart any farther." Take a pin or a little screwdriver, a metal scribe. If you're really worried about it, I know which way all the parts go in. I'm just doing this for demonstration. And just put a little doesn't hurt anything, but just a little scratch, a little witness mark on the back there, so that way you remember what way everything goes. And we put our piston up at the top pop it out and pop out our crank just because we need to clean this block out a little bit. Bearings feel good still so we're just going to reuse them. Um, I do have another set of bearings here. These are for a Traxxas Pro 15. Only the front bearing from a Traxxas Pro 15 will work in this engine. The rear one is too big. This takes a 9 by 17 by 4 in the rear. This is a 9 by 17 by 5 so it's too fat to fit in the back. It will go in but your crank won't seat into the block all the way. Um, but if you want a replacement front bearing for this engine, you can use the front one for this engine. It also works with a 12 CV as well. But uh, with this engine here, you'll notice that there's a hole in the piston, like that. That always faces this side of the block, like that, because if you put it in this way, the engine just won't run. If you see that hole through the exhaust port, it's never going to start. So we're going to, there's no wrist pin retainer. So you don't have to worry about that. The wrist pin just slides out and the connecting rod falls off. 
So there's our old piston. Uh, I'm actually going to send the sleeve away to be repinched because um, it is actually in good shape still. But when the piston can do that through the sleeve, <coughs> she's time for a rebuild. That's just worn right the frig out. It still ran, but it would only run for maybe about oh six or seven minutes and turn off, and then it would have to wait to restart it again. So um, here's our connecting rod. It's in good shape. I also have. A new wrist pin I was able to find from Hungary, or Hungary, sorry, Hungary, I'm, I apologize. It's been a long day, and we have a new 15LDX15CV uh, piston and sleeve here, which also came from Hungary. Um, they were the last ones I could find. But uh, here's our connecting rod, and we're going to look at it really quick. We're going to give it a clean up, and I'm going to also show you a trick that I do to these to... Um, not really make them last longer, but uh, just kind of something I've always liked to do. You don't have to do it. Um, if you're going to yell at me in the comments for it, go right the frig ahead because I really don't care. Um, this is a, a thing with the uh, Traxxas Pro 15 engine. They have no bronze bushing in the top of the connecting rod, and they have no oil hole here. So what happens is <clears throat> there's not even any chamfer to wick the oil in. So what happens is... This gets all loose and sloppy in here and the piston starts spanking the head or the rod breaks. So with a Pro 15 connecting rod, which is interchangeable with an OS 15 and 12 CV, drill an oil hole in the top, like a tiny little one. You use a drill bit that's that small and you can get away with it. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a little chamfer, just with a drill bit. Just a little bit, just so it helps to hold the oil there a little bit better. You're not trying to drill through the connecting rod, just put a little dimple in the top. Like I said, go ahead and yell in the comments all you want, I don't care. I've done this for friggin' years. Uh, I do this with the usually older worn out connecting rods, and do the same for the bottom. This helps the oil kind of go into the hole a little bit easier. I mean, at least in my mind that's how it works, but everyone's opinion's different. It's like an asshole. Everyone's got one. So we're going to hit that a little bit of brake parts cleaner. And I'm going to be right back. I'm just going to go grab a Q-tip and clean out the pen bores in there. So hang tight. Okay, welcome back. Oh, okay. So you got yourself a Q-tip. We're going to have a little bit of brake parts cleaner. And we're just going to clean out any varnishized fuel or old oil or anything that's in there because you want these parts to be clean. See that? Clean all your parts, man. Take your time. Don't rush rebuilding any engine. Doesn't matter what it's for. <coughs> Next, we're going to take a pin and you want to verify that the oil holes are both clear, that there's no stuff in them. You should be able to see it right through like that. So we know that's good. And if you're concerned about what way the rod went back in, remember there's that scratch we put on there. Let's see, where is it? It's hard to see in the lighting here, it's terrible. Anyway, so there's a tiny scratch there, but if you're really concerned about it, if you look at the bottom of the connecting rod, the big end, there's a chamfer there. And the chamfer always points towards the crankshaft, like this. So the chamfer side will go on here first. Okay. So we're going to next, this crankshaft might look bad, but there's no, you can't feel anything on it. There's no scoring or scratching. It's just stained from being 20 odd years old. So we're going to hit that with some brake parts cleaner and clean the center of it out with a Q-tip. Because oftentimes the center of your crankshaft can be quite dirty. Not a lot of people think about that. And I just also want to say thanks to all my new subscribers and all the guys that have been sticking around watching my nonsense for a while. You guys are all freaking awesome. Really appreciate it. All the likes and whatever. And that leads me to another thing here really quick is this is not just an RC related channel. I know that there's a lot of RC videos on it uh, because that's, well, kind of like a secondary like hobby job for me, whatever. I do this for a lot of people uh, in my area not just myself, but I like to film it because it's kind of fun, is uh, there's going to be the odd driving video, um, 
food video, whatever. So if you guys like that kind of shit, um, you know, random little videos like that, they're going to happen. So if you like it, great. If you don't, well, <laughs> don't watch it. <laughs> Simple as that. Um, you know, kind of make it how it is and whatever. I mean, it was never really designed to be an all RC channel. It was just designed to be kind of a whatever kind of driving around town video channel or something that I kind of started put lots of RC stuff on there. So, uh, next we're going to clean out our block. Uh, we're just going to hit that with some brake parts cleaner and we're going to flush out any kind of material, any kind of, well, there's nothing in here, but any kind of old varnish sized oil or anything like that. We're gonna hit that with a little bit of paper towel. Clean the outside as well as the inside. Uh, a little bit of a tip here when you're gonna take your engine apart, clean the outside first. Like take it apart, or don't take it apart, but uh, plug the carburetor, plug everything, carburetor, exhaust port, leave the glow plug in, and uh, clean the outside. That way you don't get any of the contamination on the inside. See what I'm saying? Okay, so next we're going to put our bottom end together. Castor oil. This is Klotz castor oil. This stuff with a green label. I think it's pronounced Klotz Benol or bean oil or something like that. Whatever. Um, and I'll just kind of go over everything here really quick again. Make sure everything is spick and span. Because if you don't clean shit, that's how you get an engine that doesn't last for very long. So we're just going to go over this guy again really quick. Just be careful when you're using brake cleaning in a closed environment. This stuff is not good to breathe in. Um, it is kind of not a great. It says environmentally friendly, but it's not. <laughs> so... Anyhow, so what we're going to do, inspect the inside, make sure our bearings turn nice and free. They do, there's no, you know, they turn beautifully, so. It's the thing I notice about these old OS engines, the steel cage bearings in them just last forever. I rarely ever have to replace them. I do, but, the freaking people upstairs. Anyways, so we're going to put some oil in our crankshaft. Um, these are the highest stress parts, or some of the highest stress parts of your engine, so you want lubrication on them before you start it. Some people put their engines together dry, that's just freaking plain stupid in my opinion. Um, if you're putting your any engine together dry, you're an idiot, no offense, but seriously. Okay, next we're going to open up our piston and sleeve. And even though it's new... Make sure to throw your parts just everywhere. So even though it's brand new, uh, this wrist pin isn't looking too bad. But I think I'm just going to replace it because I have a spare one, so I might as well throw it in. Um, make sure you don't lose these little Teflon pucks that go on either side of the uh, wrist pin because if you don't have those, the pin will slide out and ruin the inside of your cylinder. Um, I forgot that one time and that accidentally happened to me so even though these parts are new like I said give them a quick clean a little shot of brake cleaner um, you can use 99% rubbing alcohol if you want that stuff works great too it's just kind of hard to find and depending on where you live they look at you funny when you buy one more more than one bottle because a lot of the druggies like to use it for whatever the hell they use it for kind of sucks and we're going to do the same with our piston just give it a bit of a clean Because these parts have been sitting since the 90s and they did come from Hungary like I said so we're gonna pop out our new pin our old one's still perfectly reusable but I'm gonna leave that one with the piston and cylinder that I took out so you can see that Teflon disc on the end there there's one there and one right there Okay, so now we're going to get to reassembling. So, we're going to look for our scratch. We know it's on this side. So we know that means that our piston, or the hole in our piston, is going to face this side of the block. Hopefully you guys can see what I'm doing here. 
So what we're going to do is lay everything out, get ourselves some castor oil. You can use after-run oil. Uh, don't put your engines together with WD-40. Like I said before, it just it's not an oil. It's a freaking water dispersant or whatever you want to call it. It's not a good oil at all. And don't be shy with the oil here. Like I said, these are really high stress parts and this engine is new well at any time really so because these parts take all the brunt of the abuse the hot cold all the pinch and compression okay so there we go our piston and sleeve is put together our scratch is still there our holes on that side so just because I'm gonna put like another just a drop here and a drop there just you know, like I said, this is a brand new top end. So we want to make sure everything's going to be lubricated. We put some castor oil in our sleeve. A little bit. You don't have to put on the outside of the sleeve if you don't want to. Um, you can use after an oil for that is actually kind of a better idea. But it just helps everything go to better, together a little bit easier. Next, put some in your bottom pin bore. That way everything has a nice coating on it. Our hole and our connecting rod, we already know which way that faces. This way. Some people bitch and go, oh, that's too much oil, wah, wah, wah. Well, I'd rather have a little bit too much than not enough. And now comes the part where you gotta fiddle with it to get the, oh, there it goes. Make sure our piston's still in the right way because sometimes it can flip around on you, so just make sure. So I'll put our piston all the way at the bottom. Take our sleeve. There's a notch right there, and there's a notch or a, um, a stake or a pin in the block. A dowel pin, whatever, roll pin, whatever you want to call it. And this part can be kind of tricky where you have to kind of reach in there and just kind of poke the top of the piston to line it up with the sleeve. Try to avoid using anything metal. Okay, there it goes. After a couple little tries, it'll go. Make sure that your sleeve sits all the way level with the surface of your block. And when you turn it over, you're gonna notice it's gonna feel tight, like something's wrong. It's not that anything's wrong. It's just the fact that this is a new piston and sleeve. It has fresh pinch, everything is, is good. So, uh, let's see what we're doing on time here. Okay, I'm gonna pause this for a minute. I'm gonna put the cylinder head back on. Actually, no, I think I'll put it back on a camera. So we get our screws. Make sure our head gasket's still in there. We have a brand new glow plug we're gonna put in as well. Uh, I don't have any A3s left, so I'm gonna use a, a medium number eight, which is perfect for this engine. Um, hit your screws with a little bit of oil before you put them back in, because you are going steel into aluminum. So, you don't have to, like I said, but it's just better that you do rather than not. These are a fantastic little engine, too. Just run forever and ever. Like I said, it really, really blows that they stop making them. Okay, so we're going to put our head back on. I like it when it says CV power pointing forward. So I'm going to put it on that way. You can put it on whatever way you want, really. I mean, there is a right and a wrong way with this head. It is an air directional head, so you don't want to put it on the wrong way. Otherwise, one side of your engine is going to get hotter than the other side. Or it's not going to cool properly. So we're just going to run these screws down. Just little bits at a time until they all start to come to a stop and then lightly crisscross them evenly and then tighten them down okay oh. <laughs> got stuck at top dead center okay there we go we have our back plate starter shaft <coughs> I have a sore throat, unfortunately. I think I'm getting sick, unfortunately. So, what we're going to do, take some after an oil, a little bit on our one-way shaft here. 
slip it through, make sure your gasket's still there, because if it's not, your engine's gonna have an air leak and it's not gonna run right. Put your crank, bottom dead center, like so. Line up that notch at the bottom. Oftentimes they just fall right together, but sometimes you need to kind of fart with them a little bit. So what you can do is hold the front of the crank with your fingers and spin the shaft. You'll hear it kind of go click and go right together. And we're gonna put our screws in the back. These are upgraded screws from the Phillips that used to be in there. These are Allen head caps. I hate Phillips screws with a passion. They are friggin' garbage. There's the JSC or JSE or whatever they're called, the Japanese kind, and there's this kind and that kind, and uh, not for me. And all the screws on this engine are two millimeters, in case you wanted to know. I said evenly tighten everything down. You don't need to go retard tight, you just gotta freaking tighten them down a little bit. And here's another tip, and I've mentioned this before in previous videos, if your one-way bearing is slipping, like you gotta pull the pull starter and the engine just doesn't turn over with the, uh, what, like the cord just slips, but the engine doesn't spin with it. What you can do is take a little bit of 800 grit wet dry sandpaper and just scuff the surface on the shaft. Take the glazing off. That's it. Clean it. Clean out your one-way bearing with some brake parts cleaner. I've already done that. And then just take a dot of, uh, you don't need a lot, just a little bit of after an oil work fine. Don't use castor oil in there because it'll make it slip again. Um, or automatic transmission fluid works really good. <clears throat> being the fact that automatic transmission fluid is designed to work with one-way bearings and sprag clutches inside automatic transmissions. So if you didn't know, now you do. And this is upgraded screws in the back here because, like I said, screw Phillips. Um, so once again, two millimeter. The carburetor is on a different truck at the moment, so it's not gonna be put on in this video. And the crankshaft is going to be cut shorter on a different video, but keep tuned for that. I just got to upload this one first because my internet's slow as hell, so that might take me a little while. Right, well, there she is, guys. Turns over beautifully. Nothing wrong with that. Um, I'm sure you guys know how to install a glow plug, so I'm not going to do that on video. I'm already at 22 minutes. So, um, anyways, there she be. There's a little OS 15 CV. Uh, with a new piston and sleeve and new wrist pin. Anyways, guys, uh, take it easy and uh, have fun burning nitro out there. Or keep burning nitro. Whatever you want. <laughs>